So, what do you do if you can't afford to help family out in the Philippines? There's a, there's a couple of things here. The, the first one being is, if you've done it in the past, what did you agree? Um, see, I'll help if I can. I, I can't always help. I can't always be there. Um, but at the same time, nobody actually asks for help. I just do it if I can. Um, simply because if I was in the same position, I would hope that some people would sort me out as well. Um, I know the world doesn't work that way where we are. <laughs> but... Um, is how I work. And so if you've done it in the past and then suddenly you couldn't do it for financial reasons, just be honest. But also, it shouldn't be an obligation. It should be because you want to do it, not because you feel you have to do it. Um, I work on a... There's a very simple thing I, I, I do and have done since day one in the Philippines. If I do something for somebody, it's because I want to do it. As soon as they turn around and expect it, I won't do it. I'll stop doing it because it changes the whole perspective. Um, I do things randomly. So if somebody had said to me, Matt, my daughter's sick or whatever, and I'm like, okay, and... Uh, I might actually help them. But if they turn around and say, Matt, can you give us some money? I probably wouldn't. Um, unless there was a real reason behind it, like a completely freaking out parent or whatever that's got nowhere else to go, then there's a good chance I would help them out. Um, but if it's just somebody that just turns up and I go, oh, uh, my child said, can you... No, not a hope. Um because the thing is, I look at some of the stuff that goes on, and for example, a neighbour spends money on his motorbike. Yeah, his kid could do with medical care, extra food, extra vitamins, boosting up the immune system, etc., putting on a bit of weight, but he buys motorcycle parts. So that one then becomes in that very complex thing of do you help the child or do you blame the parent? At the end of the day, it's not my obligation to sort their child out if something did happen. But at the same time, I may still do it if the kid actually needed some help purely because that's the way I am. This is why I say it's all dependent on your situation, who you are. Cause I know a lot of guys that wouldn't, wouldn't do a thing for family members. And that's... That's their choice. This this isn't an obligation. Um, and if you're going to retire or something, and you've been doing it for some time, just tell them the money's stopping the day I retire. Uh, because it does in the Philippines. You know, the, they put the kids out to work, and then the parents pack up work, and they, they'll sit down and rely on the kids to support them. So that's their culture. Yeah, and that's, that's, this is where I'm quite funny in manipulating things because when people go, oh, well, that's, this is our culture when it's, they want something, I will turn around and say, well, hang on, it's not my culture. But in the same way, like this, this scenario, you say I'm retiring, it's no longer my problem. Um, and I know it's not an easy thing to do, but you cannot afford that obligation and the expectation because if people assume that you're going to deal with it they'll spend their money because you, they'll expect you to sort them out all the time but on the other hand if you turn around and say well I'm retiring next year there is no money after next year that's the end of it that's it you know it's it's off the table um, and just say well you be thankful for what you've had so far because after I retire, there is no nothing else. There's nothing wrong with doing it. It's all about communication and saying, I can't afford it. You know, I'm retiring. I'm, I've worked my life. I've saved my money. I've, I've done everything for my life. I can't do any, any more. And you know what? I help because I can. 
and I do pull money out of thin air sometimes. But at the same time, that's just me. I mean, I'm sitting looking at things today um, because I need to increase my income here in Spain. Um, it's increased by five dollars this month. You think five dollars is not a lot? That's five dollars indefinitely. That's that's uh, for the next twenty-five years or whatever. <laughs> um, this is how I build things up in small sections. I look at something, and if it starts making a bit of money, I'll keep tapping away at it. I've got some money in the UK that's in an investment. I basically just write that money off, and that's currently making £25 a year. Not a lot of money, but at the same time, that's another £25 a year I don't have to earn anymore. And this is what I do. I try to keep my expenses down, and my income up. So you should get to a point where your expenses are below your income. And once you start getting that, this bit goes up quite fast um, because you're no longer spending what you're earning. You, you're above it. You're actually gaining interest on the money you've got in the bank and things like that. So, yes, it's not easy. Do I have a magic formula? Um, no. Do I work some days? For 20 hours the answer is yes um, do I sit working well thinking about it till 2 in the morning sometimes the answer is yes it's like now it's 11 o'clock um, and I'm still working on a couple of things I want to get finished tonight but the point is that's me I'm not saying that's ideal for everybody but um, my work time at the moment so during the night because of the kids. So, But here's another scenario. You increase your earning, earning potential by $200 a month. You put that $200 a month in a medical allocation fund. And that's it. Once it hits a certain amount, you may just say, that's it. That's all that's in there. Or you may say, okay... We'll just leave that for the next 10 years. We're going to put 200 a month in it. And it'll hit a certain threshold. And then hunt around the bank accounts in the Philippines because some of them do give you better returns than you will get in the UK, for example. Or more importantly, for me, it's offshore as such. I don't end up it being taxed on my UK income um, because it's not mine. <laughs> It's in and it's not in country, which is the important bit. So there's there, there is ways to do it if you wanted to do it, but I will not turn around and say you must or I recommend or anything. It's completely up to circumstances. Because I talked before about the guy where he found out the child was insured when they said they were sick. He had the same with a funeral. They asked him to pay for a funeral service, which was already insured. And with that sort of family... I would cut them off completely. They would not get a financial thing for anything because they couldn't be trusted with nothing. Um, that is a bad family. But if, for example, I mean, our family is pretty good. We work together. Uh, we do stuff together. And with me in Spain, it's my in-laws that look after the properties in the Philippines. And as such, the money there keeps rolling. Because um, what happens is... it either goes towards the electric and all those sort of bills or it goes on the renovations the next stage we got there is the windows are in our upstairs already i'm trying to get an architect to actually finish the design of the three bedroom apartment upstairs because then i can split it into phases and go right this month we're doing the electricals next month we're doing the stud partitioning etc etc um I, and that's how we work. We, do, we don't rush anything. We do what our budget allows. Um, and that's the same with medical cover, to be honest. I, I've got regular income coming. Um, although this month did stretch me because it was money. I was starting to push from going to the Philippines to actually start to pay the rent in Spain. Because then I can look at making more money in Spain for stuff here. Um, but the AdSense and stuff is going up in the Philippines anyway, so 
that will eventually happen anyway because there's more money going to the Philippines from other sources. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Yeah.